welcome to Pulverosmanen. In this video I'm gonna show you this tube amplifier that I have built recently that is up and running perfectly and uh, I'm gonna show you how it's built and a li little bit what it can do and what it's made of. Let's begin with the schematics here. It is based on the Fender Champ that you can find on the net but uh, I have slightly modified some circuit in that uh, amplifier to make it work the way I like. Uh, the thing I was changing afterwards was this volume control that uh, I had to add an extra resistor to make the volume control work and uh, to keep the sound in control. So Also this, uh, I had a plan to make a channel mixer. I have actually skipped that one and just have a mono input instead. I also have added an extra pre-output that I will show you how it works actually with my uh, old radiola radio over there and something interesting about that too I have used EC41 tube and uh, a little bit different capacitors and everything here so let's go over to the amplifier and have a look at it here's the volume control Here's the rectifier tube, we have a double triode and the output pentode. The double triode is also the one that's connected to the preamplifier output, so when using that one, this pentode is not used. And over here we have the power button on the back. We have a source selection switch here which uh, uses the internal speaker that I've put in there a neutral for use with the output and uh, external speaker position so here on the back we got line input and it's just hooked up in mono the pre-amplifier output the speaker output and the AC inlet So if you lift the lid, we can have a look inside. It is uh, made a little bit on purpose with loose wires like this, because then you can easily track down every single part of how this amplifier is hooked up and works. So here's the capacitors, it's the input capacitor of the rectifier and uh, so on. And this is the gain capacitor for the output pentode. There is also a fuse for the AC input, the AC transformer. Here's the input. This one is the input side, has a small 0.1 microfarad capacitor, goes directly to the first part of the in input on the triode. And then you have a larger one on the output which has the second side of the triode output and uh, there is an extra function here I have added extra this is the output pentode contact and here it's just a parallel 7 pin contact that will work with another tube I have uh, made it possible to take out this 6 n 1 n tube and uh, replace with this uh, EL90 Ultron tube so you just switch it out and it will sound pretty much the same so there is also the possibility to use another pin compatible triode and change out this Marshall ECC83 and uh, this is kind of the same tube but with lower gain and uh, it has another uh, sound characteristics too so depending on which tube you're using you may get different sound on the output so this 1287 will actually make more high sounds so like the hi-hats and everything will make a lighter more uh, dynamic sound while the ECC83 will give a more bassy and uh, round good sound so it's a hard one to choose but you can always change them if you like to listen to the different sound 
and uh, the EC81 is the rectifier tube there. So having a look at here again, we have uh, these uh, three resistors here in series are actually the one just from the positive side of the rectifier directly to the ground to discharge the deadly voltage when you turn it off because it's actually charged here with here with uh, about 350 volts so you really don't want to touch these parts when it's running and uh, there is a little extra parts here the resistors and everything you could change it with uh, this screw terminal here so it's uh, pretty easy to see and look how it works and this important part down here this is the output transformer it is necessary to take down the high voltage to the speaker output from uh, around 4 to 8 ohms without damaging the tube so you need to have one of these for it to actually work and here is the internal speaker it's a Dayton DN914 it's actually a really powerful speaker for its size it has a long long excursion and uh, gives a much sound for its size so it was a pretty good use for uh, having this one in a little, little small box here and here is the volume control I was using the third pin here as the output instead but now I have uh, just this one is grounding the signal and it has this 12k resistor here that makes this 100k resistor pot to work within normal range of the amplifier here because if you turn it up too much the sound would just uh, pop and become very strange so it needs to have a certain amount of ground before it to work so it uh, makes the volume control go all the way from zero and all the way to max without anything happening so pretty nifty so let's close this one up and uh, have a little closer look how it plays should we so let's open up another player here and we can take uh, this one here and we can turn up the volume a little bit so when you are down with the beat and you follow the vibes that's right stretch your arms in the air so easy and jump like you just don't care song of the angels it's like stretching your arms out in the universe of music can you see what happens when you push the beat harder it's like stretching your arms out in the universe of music it up to this radiola over here and the interesting part about this is that when using this uh, gramophone input on this radio over here directly to the iPad for example the volume control won't work you have to change the volume on the iPad to make the volume on the radio become different so the fun part about this is when you use this pre-amplified output with this radio the output and volume control will actually work 
on this very radio. And when using this output to the radio, this uh, speaker output here will more or less get muted. So let's try and play something here. Take uh, something like this. of this amplifier playing some other stuff and maybe but thanks for watching and have a nice day